something a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the youth. And as we dismiss the youth, I just want y'all to take two minutes. Go around. There's somebody in here that really needs a hug. And I'm not sure who that is, but y'all just go around and hug one another. Tell them you love them and Jesus loves them. Just get up now. Two minutes, y'all, because we got a good message and we don't want to. We don't want to wait too long before we get started on that message. So, um, love on one another. Hallelujah. And for those of you watching on live stream, we send you hugs right now, honey. Let's send them a hug. Ready? Mm, that's to you on on live stream. Right. right. Hallelujah. Are you on? Yes. Love. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh, <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much. Maybe we were the ones that needed a hug. <laughs> that was so precious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Thank you, Lord. Say something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, if y'all will turn Van up a little bit, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Talk. Okay, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, so, you know, uh, several weeks ago, Javan had several things in his heart that he wanted to preach on, and we were, we were it was such a blessing all of the messages that he spoke and anytime he has something we want to give him that opportunity but it's good to be back up here again it's been a while and um you know through the years we have been uh, through the years through the <laughs> through this year not years through this year we have been uh teaching on new beginnings and new chapters and you know in the old testament where is where we are right now and uh, we'll be moving on maybe to the New Testament next week. Van and I will be ministering next week. Uh, also, we're not sure who we're going to do next. But the, all of these characters in the Bible were placed there in the Word of God for us to learn what to do and what not to do. You know, there are so many things. And you can see some mistakes that they've made along the way. You can see uh, the, the great things that they accomplished and and uh, how they had to get past some of their flesh and uh, things in their soulish realm. But God placed those there for us so that we could gain. That's why it's so important that you read the entire Word of God, not just the New Testament. You need to read all of it because we learn so much. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're talking about Moses, New Beginnings, Part 13. And eventually, we're going to have all of this put into a series for you on the website. Um, it won't be as long as Javan's 45-part series that he had on the Attributes of Christ or whatever many parts it was. I forgot. But anyway, let's just do a, a tiny bit of recap. You know, it's important for us. You know, when you are living your life, you don't live life in the rearview mirror. Because if you're driving and you're looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to have a wreck. So, um, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, as y'all know the scripture, and we've been saying this each time, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and all things have passed away. Let's say that. All things have passed away. So, does that mean you dwell on them? Does that mean you bring them back up to, uh, to people and say, well, this is what happened in the past, and, and, it, and then it affects your future? No, of course not. And he said, behold, all things have become new, new beginnings. In Philippians 3, 13 through 15, it says, brethren, I count myself uh, not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This is Paul speaking. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You know, of course, for him, as he murdered and, and, and persecuted Christians when he was Saul, and then he had that road to Damascus experience. Can you imagine how hard it would have been for him to be able to do all that God called him to do and write two-thirds of the New Testament when he had done so many wrong things in his past against the body of Christ? I mean, think about that. So he had to, and he said, man, forget that stuff. 
because it will cause you to be insecure and, and, and not be able to fulfill the calling of God in your life. Philippians 1, six. we have to be confident of the very thing that he who began a good work in you, he is the one that's going to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And finally, this one that we've given you each time we've done this is Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Do not remember the former things. There it is. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The Lord wants to bless us. And he wants our focus to be on everything he has for us in our future, in our destiny. You know, whether it was good things or bad things. You know, you may have, have been an Olympic star. And yet, because you just dwell on that in your past then you don't have anything to look forward to in your future because you keep focusing on that. So whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, whatever it is, put the past behind you and let's move forward. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Amen? All right, so now we're going to be talking about, ex, uh, talking about Moses. And we have a lot to share about Moses. We will not be talking today uh, about the Ten Commandments. We will not be talking about the Ten Plagues. We're going to be talking about the character of Moses. Now, there will be things that we will share about his character, some things you may have heard, some things you may not have heard, but it all, it all bears repeating as we study uh, the life of Moses. Exodus 2, 23 through 25. Now, it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt had died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out. Now, y'all all know the story about everything that happened there. And all the persecution and the things they went, that they went through. And they cry, the cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. Now let's see what he does. Okay, in Exodus Chapter 3, if you will look there with me, please, Exodus chapter 3, look at verse 1. Hallelujah. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Now, you know what? Let me interject this real quick because, listen, the Lord said to him, Moses, Moses. Now, look what Moses said. Here I am. Because he knew the voice, because he had relationship with the Lord. That's right. And see, this is important. This reminds me of the story in Acts 9. Now, we're not going to go there. But in Acts 9, where uh, Saul, remember we talked about the road of Damascus experience. Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus. And, and the Lord came to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you? With a question mark. He said, Lord? Because he didn't know the voice. He didn't have that relationship. Now here, when Moses has a relationship with God, he said, here I am. Immediately, there was no hesitation. Well, it's just like Ananias in, in uh, Acts chapter 9. When God told Saul, you will go, there is a man that I have commanded to come and to pray for you, to have healing in your eyes, to have your eyes restored. And so the Lord went to Ananias in a vision. And he said, Ananias. And Ananias said, here I am, Lord. The exact same thing. He said, here I am, Lord. Because he had relationship and he knew the voice. He, this is one thing we want you to learn from Moses. Moses knew in relationship with God. If you want to know God's voice, you need to spend time with him. You need to stay in the word to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved and have that relationship and ongoing uh, interaction. And that's what, what Ananias did. And of course, you know, the Lord told Ananias, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go and lay hands on, on Saul and pray for him. And he said, oh, Lord, but wasn't this the one that's 
murdering Christians. Now, think about that. If God asked you to be the one, then you know this man has been killing Christians. Would you want to be the one to go lay hands on him? But God knew because of relationship that Ananias had with him that he would do it. And he, and he said to him, he said, Ananias, he is a man I have called. I have chosen. A chosen vessel of mine. So what did Saul do? He said, okay. He went and he went up to him. He put his hand on him and he said, brother Saul. He called him brother. That comes from relationship. So here, Moses in the Old Covenant, and we have one in the New Covenant, we have one in the Old Covenant, who heard the voice of God, and he, he said right then, Lord, here I am, I hear you. All right, so picking up back at verse 4, so when the Lord saw he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the, midst of the bush, <clears throat> excuse me, and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am, verse 5. Then he said, do not draw near this place take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground amen moreover he said i am the god of your father the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob and moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon god and the lord said i have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows so i've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Pezzarites and the Hivites and all the rest of the ites along with the <laughs> and stuff. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, we're going to see some character situations here in Moses that we're going to be talking about. In Moses, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. See, he's got all these doubts all of a sudden that have come to his mind. It's like, what if this? And what if that? How many of you have ever done a what if thing? Man, I have. Where you just come and you say, man, Lord, I don't know about this. But he said, what if they don't listen? What if, what if they, they think you're not here? And so the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? Now, y'all, that is a full message by yes, itself. It is. What is in your hand? That's a series by right it, it can be, but we're going yes. to just briefly touch this. But it said, what is in your hand? And he said, it's a rod. It could have been a stick. It could have been whatever. But it was a, it was a rod of some sort. And so the Lord, there are going to be things that the Lord equips you with. And whatever he's equipped you with, mm -hmm. you use what's in your hand. What's in your hand. What he's given you, you use that. You know, an example of that, we have the, the pastor friends of ours. And they, they uh, usually watch this. When their, when their service is over. But, you know, they have a, a zoo church because the Lord started really speaking to Ed and Brenda about starting a church. In Bolton, Massachusetts. And they own a zoo. And he said, what better way than for us to just put a, a church in our zoo? So they have the only zoo church around. But they have church with the people and the animals. It's the coolest thing. But that was what was in his hand. This is what I know. This mm -hmm. is what I do. Right. And it has been so effective. But I thought that was really cool. So Let me say this too. You need to know what's in your hand. Absolutely. You need to be familiar with what's in your hand because so many times people don't really know what's in their hands, what they have available. And they're asking God to do this, do the other. And, and God is really thinking, you know, why don't you utilize what's in your hand? The giftings. I've the giftings. Given. And sometimes <clears throat> we don't recognize some of the things that we have are giftings and they're, and they're special. You know, there are people that do things a lot of times and it comes so easy to them. And they just think, oh, everybody, anybody can do that. And that's not the case. No. You know, it's just an anointing to do something. So be sure, ask the Lord, say, Lord, what all is in my hands? What do I have in my possession that you want to take and multiply? You want to take and use for your glory. And he will tell you. He's not going to hold out or play games with you. He's going to let you know that. So it goes on, and he says, the Lord told him, he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. 
So Moses fled from it. I would too, wouldn't you? And then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Now, how many of you know, if you're going to take a snake, you're sure not going to take it by the tail. What's going to happen? That snake's going to come back around and, and bite you. So that's the last thing you would do if you're going to pick up a snake. You're going to grab it by the head, I guess. I've watched Ed do it. Ed did it. Ed had that. Did y'all see that picture of us with that big, big snake? Oh, my gosh. We had this huge snake. It's a python, we were, yeah. And, and, Burmese python. Yeah, and he was on one end, and she was on the other end. And Van and I were in the middle, and I, I was holding that snake. I said, man, I thought I'd never do that. But, you know, the thing is, you're not gonna, you're not going to go and pick up that snake by the tail. Now... To show you how powerful this was in his relationship with the Lord, he trusted the Lord. He didn't trust himself, but he trusted the Lord. Now, let's, let's go on and, and see that. Because he said, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and he caught it and it became a rod again. Because Moses trusted God. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Your own understanding is going to say, no, no, you're not going to pick up that snake by the tail. You're going to run. <laughs> you're not going to be anywhere near that. I wouldn't. I mean, can you imagine having to pick up a snake? You better know, man. I tell you what, God would have to write it on the sky. He'd have to write it on every wall for me to pick up a snake at all, but especially by the tail, you know? So, but he, but he trusted the Lord with all his heart, and he didn't lean to his understanding. And the Bible goes on to say in Proverbs 3, 6, in all your ways you'll acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. So he did what God said, but in a minute we're going to find out a little more about his own thoughts about and, himself. And you know what? We're not talking about Moses having self-confidence because no. our confidence is supposed to be in him, not That's in right. ourselves. However, the big thing here is <clears throat> knowing the voice of the Lord. When Amen. you know the voice of the Lord in your, in your born-again spirit and you know that you've heard the voice of the Lord, then when you hear something and, it, and it's like something wild or something, it, it may be something tame or something uh, not, not so out there, but if it is, then you know the voice of the Lord and you're going to obey it because it's, it's being obedient to what he tells you is what's key here. And when you're obedient, it's like the word says, when you're obedient, that you'll, you know, you'll be blessed, you'll eat of the fat of the land when you're obedient. But you, it's, obedience is greater than sacrifice. And so you don't, this is what Moses did. Moses, Moses had really, at first he was not, you know, just a, a blindly obedient. He had all these excuses and everything else, which we're, we're going we'll to talk about here in just a minute. But I, I encourage you all as New Testament believers with the Holy Spirit living inside of you. When the voice of the Lord says something to you and you know it's the voice of the Lord, be quick to obey. Amen. Be quick to obey. You know, it's like our own story. You know, when, when Van knew, when we were celebrating our anniversary on our 15th wedding anniversary, and we've been married 42 years now, and we heard the Lord clearly say that Van was to leave Delta Airlines and we were going into full-time ministry. It was so strong on us that he went the very next day and told him that he was going to be leaving. That's how strong that was. And then when we went from the last building, we ran to this one. And God told us we were to take this building. There's a long story that we're not going to get into today. But we went from, the, from there to here overnight paying five times a month more. And our house was put down as collateral. With no more people. With no more people. Than what we had. They, people would have said... That's like picking up a snake. Y'all have lost your mind. We had so many people tell us how crazy we were. Y'all, that was 13 years ago. Do you know Van and I never lost a night's sleep over this? We knew we heard from God. And when you know you hear from God, you obey. Now, so we, we moved there and, and the payment was astronomical. But you know what? In 13 years now, we have paid three days early every single month. Only the grace of God this was something God put in our hands. It was only the grace of God. And we had to obey the voice of the Lord when we heard it. We knew when we heard it. And we had to be careful again, just like Katie said. You be careful who you tell things to because, yes. you know, we wanted people that were going to believe with us. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. 
So anyway, that's important for you to understand what's in your hand. Yeah. This was what God put in our hand. And we obeyed his voice. And when we trusted him with all our heart and didn't lean to what our understanding is telling us that we had lost our minds. You, you, you have lost your mind. We had people tell us you'd never make it. And we said, just sit back and watch. And look at the testimony that unfolded. Praise God. Okay, we're going to continue down in Exodus 4, uh, 10. And, you know, I want to uh, say this again. You know, these characters that we go through here, it's so imperative that you get what they're going through and get the mistakes, see the mistakes they made or the things they compromised in and, the, and their victories so we can, you know, it'll help us in our own lives. It doesn't matter whether they're from the That's Old right. Testament or from the New Testament, the principles remain the same. So Exodus 4, 10 through 16, then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. This is, this is the uh, reasons I don't qualify. These are excuses. I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your service, servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Ooh, that's a good word. Y'all remember the message Javan just did recently on the sanctified mouth? I mean, I'm telling you what. Y'all got to go back and listen to that. That was an excellent, excellent message. Who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not the, the Lord, is it not the Lord? Now, therefore, go and I will be with your mouth. That's an interesting way to put it, isn't it? Go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So he's saying, he, he's like, <laughs> I don't want to do this, Lord. I'm not sure I can do this. And he started coming up with every excuse He didn't excuse feel qualified. Away. Yeah, he didn't. And there think, again. You know what? I think it was an insecurity that he himself had. He believed in God's ability to do anything. Right. And he listened to God. And he had that relationship with God. But he didn't want to be the one chosen. And he didn't want to be the one to have to speak it. How many have ever been there? Mm -hmm. We've all been there, haven't yes. we? Yes. Verse 14. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses for asking all these questions and not saying, yes, Lord, I'll go. And he said... Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he's coming to meet you. When he sees you, he'll be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his heart. I'm, yeah. You, you, now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. Excuse me. And I will be with your mouth and with, your, and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he will be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you and you shall be to him as God that's a very interesting way to put that you're going to be you're going to be hearing directly from me and then you're going to be presenting it to him and he's going to be your mouthpiece and you shall take the rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs you know this reminds us too of another story and, and it's important to, to let's look at these different stories along the way Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1, verse 5 through 8, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then says Lord, then said I, Ah, Lord God, but I cannot speak, for I am but a youth. Here's another one with excuses. I'm just a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to whom all I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. You know, I think a lot of people deal with fear. You know, in Proverbs 29, 25, it says, the fear of man brings a snare. Isn't that right? The yeah. fear of man brings a, a snare. It yes. said, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be safe. You know, and if we put our trust in the Lord, trust him with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path, and he will also keep you safe. Don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of the people. Don't be afraid of the naysayers. The people that said to us, you will never make it when you move in that building. We had to not even think about those things. We had to keep our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and know that he was going to take care of us. And he was going to make the provision. Mm -hmm. And as long as we obeyed his voice. But here, you know, when, when, Jeremiah, uh, when Jeremiah said, I'm just a youth, how can I do this? And so then the Lord goes on to explain. There are times when the Lord has told Van and I, 
No, this is what I've called you to do. And then we ask him, oh, is, is it this, this, and this? He said, no, I'm, I'm, let me explain to you. And he shows us. Do you see how the Lord with Moses made a way possible, even though the Lord was upset with him, because he did not go himself and use his own voice. He said, okay, well, you have a brother, and we're going to use him, and this is how it's going to work. The Lord had a plan, regardless of our own inadequacies or our insecurities. All right, Jeremiah 1. Uh, look at verse 9, please. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I've set this day, set before you, over, set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out huh. and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So, this whole thing about him being a youth, I think one, uh, one version says a child, but a youth. So he's very young, but he's trying to tell the Lord, you know, I'm too young for this kind of thing. I don't, I'm not experienced. I don't have gone through a lot of life experiences and everything else. The Lord doesn't, didn't care about that. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. I've touched your mouth, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak through you. You know, the Lord will speak through you. And that's why we talk about um, words of prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge and, and uh, right. words of wisdom. And while we encourage you in here to, to stir up the gifts. You know, the word says, for us to pursue love, right? Pers in Corinthians, for pursue love, but desire spiritual gifts. In particular, that you may prophesy. But we don't pursue spiritual gifts. It tells us to what? Pursue what? Pursue love. Love. Pursue love. Got to have love mixed in there or you'll get off track. But you pursue love and the spiritual gifts will come as you desire them to come to you. And before we leave this about Jeremiah, you know, when it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before he was ever formed in his mother's womb. See, that's why it's important for us to understand that we need to train up our children in the way that they should go. You know, when you teach them the Word of God at a young age, when you do Bible studies at home with your children, because you don't know the calling. Just, just like with Javan, the Lord spoke to me uh, audibly, and he said, the child inside your womb I've called to minister the gospel uttermost parts of the earth. And y'all see what Javan is doing now. And, it's, and it, the, the thing is, is, it's important as parents, every one of us, no matter how young or old we are, we have destiny. Destiny that's given to us by the Lord. And it's important for us to spend time in the Word and to teach our children the, the way they should go so that they know how to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, let's go on down then. We're, we're down at, um, you know, that's, this is another verse that I think is really good in Hebrews 10.35. See, the, the problem that we saw with Moses is he lacked confidence in himself. The Bible says, cast on away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. We need to know. You know, it's no longer that we that are living anyway. It's Christ who lives in us. And he's given us everything of who he is. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given us wisdom. When you like it, you ask it of him, and he gives it to you liberally. So you need to be confident in your ability to hear the Lord. You need to be confident in your ability to obey the Lord. You know, I don't know what would have happened if we hadn't moved into this building. But we've seen a lot of miraculous things since we have. It's been phenomenal. And, and I know that, that God had a plan, and we followed that plan because we had confident expectation. We had that confident expectation, and we were able to reap the harvest. Amen? Uh, look at Exodus 4, please. Exodus 4, 27. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God and kissed him. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then he did the signs in the sight of the people. He did the signs in the sight of the people to really to legitimize who he was. To legitimize, you know, the people, there's still people out there with, you know, like with questions above their heads now. Who are you representing us? We didn't vote you in. We didn't do anything else. How, how, who are you? 
So he, the Lord had him do those signs in the, in, the, in the sight of the people. So the people believed because of the signs. And when they heard the Lord had visited the children of Israel, that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and they worshiped. You know, it's no different as far as people believing today with signs and wonders and miracles. Such an important part. You're not, we're not running around chasing signs, wonders, and miracles, but it is, does confirm the teaching and the preaching of the word and ministry. And you want signs and wonders and miracles. You don't ever talk yourself out of, oh, well, what I'm saying is good or what, what we're doing is great and whatever else. But desire the, 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 the signs, wonders, and miracles to accompany your work because it legitimizes it in the, light, the sight of the people. It, does, it did for G Jesus. Jesus needed to do those signs and wonders. In fact, he even said one time, he said, if you don't want to believe me, at least believe this, the signs, wonders, and miracles I'm doing. You know, believe in those. In which he knew if he would do that, then you'd believe in Jesus. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Exodus 6, 28. Let's get 28 and 29. And it came to pass on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt. That the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I am the Lord. Speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. All right, let's skip down to Exodus 7 and 1 through 5. It says, so the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Pretty cool. You shall speak to all that I command you. And Aaron, your brother, shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of this land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply the signs. Now, this is important right here. And multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. See, because he knew it had to be a lot for them to believe, for Pharaoh to let them go. He had to, make, he had to harden Pharaoh's heart with all of the ten plagues that, that, that had happened. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother... Uh, Let's see, let me skip down here to four. But Pharaoh will not heed you so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people and the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know through this that I am the Lord and I will stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So it was, it was quite a show. It was quite a show. And, and we, like I said, we don't have time to go into all of those. Um, I know you all know the, the plagues and, and, and everything. But I'm telling you what, you look at the hand of God. But it was so amazing to me, if you think back to when the Ten Commandments were being created and Moses was up on the mountain and, and nobody could come there, what in the world was Aaron doing? This is why, this is why God didn't choose Aaron. <laughs> He's down there building a stupid calf to worship, a golden calf to worship. Y'all, this is ridiculous. But Moses was the one who had the word. He's the one, and it says, um, you know, that was going to be over the people. He was the one that was going to, but Moses, Aaron was only there to speak what God put in Moses' heart That's right. and in Moses' mouth. He said, I will be with your mouth and with Aaron's mouth. But, boy, thank God he didn't choose Aaron to, to lead that. Okay, now where am I? I, I Exodus 14, 13. And Moses, All right. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. I'm going to stop right there. When the Lord, when you're dealing with any situation in your life, and it could cause anxiety. That's right. Possibility of fear, you know, of being paralyzed in, in your own heart. Or that you just, you know, doubt and unbelief. So many times we try to fight our own battles. Yes. We try to, you know, eke them out. We try to flesh them out. We try to do whatever. All 100% of the time, we need to stand still. When, the, when something arises that could be catastrophic in the natural, against your family, your possessions, or whatever else, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because your trust is in him. It doesn't mean in life you don't do anything, but you only do what the Lord instructs you to do. Remember Ziklag, when David, uh, when, all, when the people, uh, all the enemy came in and took all the wives and the children and the, and the riches and everything else, and man, it was just rough and, and, and burning things and the, and the uh, 
David's men, his army, they were wanting to stone David. It's like, this is not going to work. And so David, being a king, being a warrior, kings, all, kings go off to war. That's what kings do. And, you know, you would think, okay, well, David's going to grab the guys. Let's go take them. He didn't do that. He just he stopped in his tracks and he sought the Lord. And he said, Lord, shall I pursue or not pursue? The Lord said, not, he answered the question. The Lord said, pursue and you will recover all. Man, what confidence did that give David to tear out with the men, the ragtag army that he had that was getting ready to stone him earlier? Let's go, boys. God said, He's given us, given, we recover everything back. And it all certainly turned out that way. But we've got to know, with a surety, we've got to know, you hear the voice of the Lord. And that's the point I want to keep driving home. Driving home. You learn. If you say, well, I don't know how to discern the Lord's voice. Ask the Lord to help you, to teach you. Look through all the word. Find out who you are in Christ. What belongs to you in him, in Christ through Christ, all those things. That means, the word says, my sheep hear my voice. Can it be any clearer than that? The word, my sheep. How many sheep have Jesus got in here? What does that mean? you <laughs> got some baths right here on the second row, right here. What does that mean? If, the, according to the word, my sheep hear my voice, what does that mean you should be able to do? Hear his voice. So don't talk yourself out of it. Amen. That's good. And the Lord said to Moses, uh oh. That's I, right. I think I knocked it off. Where'd it go? 15. Okay. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod. What's in your hand? Your rod. Lift up your rod. Remember, this became the rod of God, but it was still in Moses' hand. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And then uh, chapter 17, verse 6 says, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Because the people were complaining about not having anything to drink. They were thirsty. And so God, you know, all you do is you go to God and say, God, here's the, here's the issue, okay? You go strike the rock one time with your rod and water's going to come up. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and that's what happened. All right, now let's see what happens later with the rod. So no, numbers, number 20, verse 8. Take the rod. Now he's telling him, take the rod. He said, and you and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together. Speak. Now listen, this is different. God never does everything the same. There's no formula. There's no formula with God. Because when it becomes a formula, then you look at that formula rather than God for your solution. Did you hear what I said? You're leaning on your own understanding when you're doing that. And you don't want to do that. But look what happened here. But the Lord told him, take the rod. And I think that this was a test. Mm -hmm. Like, don't forget your rod. Okay, I won't forget my rod. But he took the rod and his... you and your brother gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Did he say hit the rock? He said, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall spring water from them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. But look what happened. Moses, rather than putting his faith in God, he's put his faith in a rod. He didn't stop and do what God said this time. He was disobedient, and it cost him. Mm -hmm. It cost him. And Numbers 20, verse 10, said, And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. Of course, he's, he's angry. Of course, they complained a lot, you know. What are you doing for us out here in this wilderness? You know, the wilderness was a great time. It was a time of provision. Their, yeah. their, their shoes never All wore out in 40 years. Met. And yeah. they, had, they had manna from heaven and water from rocks. It, right. was a, it was a blessed time. That's why sometimes people talk about, I used to hear this a long time ago, the circle we're in now, the last 20-something years, I don't hear it very much. But you remember people saying, oh, I'm going through a desert experience. <laughs> I want to say, of the wilderness. In the wilderness. I'm in the yeah, wilderness. Yeah, I'm in the wilderness. God's taking me out in the wilderness. 
Well, I thought, man, you got, if you're out in the wilderness, same wilderness as the children of Israel, you've got manna from heaven, and you've got, you know, you've got everything you need. You, in fact, you went out there with gold and silver that you plundered yeah. the Egyptians. So that's, that's, that's not... So anyway, so he's angry, and he said, here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand with the rod, and he struck the rock twice. He struck it. Even when he was striking the rock, he was only supposed to strike it one time. And the water came. Now look what God did. God didn't punish the children of Israel Mm -hmm. because of Moses' disobedience. Did you hear this? Mm -hmm. That's right. It said, and the water came out abundantly. Abundantly. Not just ample supply. Abundantly. The water came out abundantly. Yes. Because God was taking care of the children of Israel, even though Moses disobeyed. He said, uh, abundantly and the congregation and their animals drank then the Lord he didn't do it in front of the people he, he called them aside he said the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron because you did not believe me because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel he, me. he dishonored mm-hmm. the Lord at that point therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them that was so sad to me Every time, and we'll read this later, but every time, Van and I would read that when we do our Bible readings, where Moses didn't get to go, and he had to stand and look over the land, flowing with milk and honey and the palm trees and all the beauty, and he had to die there on the hill. I cry. I, it just makes me sad, because he disobeyed the Lord, and he didn't get to go. It's sad. Deuteronomy 32, 51, because you trespassed against me, for the Lord saying, among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribath Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because you did not hallow or did not honor me in the midst of the children of Israel, yet you shall see the land before you, though you shall not go there into the land which I am given to the children of Israel. After all he did. Yeah to take the children out. But out of one act of disobedience, Mm -hmm. he had to pay a consequence that was really sad. You know, we have to be so careful, y'all. It's so important that we obey the Lord when the Lord tells us something. Because I'm telling you, his, and and of course in the New Covenant, his grace is so amazing. But it's still important. You know, I'm gonna tell you what would have happened if Van had not left Delta when God said to. About three or four years later, the department that Van was in was demolished. And Van would have lost his job. If he hadn't obeyed God, he would have lost his job. We obeyed God, and because of that, we had a severance package, and we had flying for the next, even after that, 15 more years. Those people came in that day, and they were told to leave the property, and they were, that was it. So, but anyway, I just, uh, it's important that you obey God. Yes. You know? So now we're going to talk about a couple other points before we close out. We want to talk about a point of delegating. How important it is to delegate. So we want to talk a couple of examples. And Regina uh, and I have really, over the years, had to learn how to delegate, you know, because in the, in the infancy of this church, we were doing everything. I mean, and we kept, it's a lot of times we kept year after year, decade after decade, you, go, you continue to do that, sometimes out of habit, and just sometimes, you know, instead of raising up the leaders and allowing leaders to go do what they, you know, know to do and stuff. So it's very important. Delegating is very important, really, no matter what you do in life, it, what, you're, what you have in life, in your, in your uh, jobs, in your businesses or whatever else. Or even as a mother. Have your, a mother teach like your children, children how to clean the house. How to help you. Teach your children how to help along the way. Exactly. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you don't, you'll burn out. Yes. And if you're experiencing burnout in any job or any situation, it's, it, maybe it's because you're not delegating and teaching those that are with you how to help you. Exodus 18, verse 17. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. You're not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people. 
so that you may bring the difficult difficulties to God and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, every one big matter they'll bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. You know, another example of this, too, um, is in Exodus 17. And I don't know that we're going to read this whole thing, but write it down. It's Exodus 17, 8 through 15. And this is victory over the Amalekites. Um, now, Amalek came forth, and there was going to be this battle. Now, y'all know the story, how Moses... As long as he held his hands up, the battle was being won. But the, he got tired and he grew weary. So as his, as his hands would come down, his they would begin. Yeah. To, as his arms would come down, he would begin to lose. The, the, they would lose the battle. Yeah. So Aaron and Hur came and they lifted up his arms until the battle was won, until right. it was over. And that's how you, you delegate, you get people to help hold your arms up so you don't grow weary in well-doing, so you don't get tired. You let people hold your arms up. Now, the thing that's interesting about this story is when they, when they had to lean him back, he wasn't leaning on any man. He was leaning on a rock. Mm -hmm. We don't lean on men and women. We lean on the Lord Jesus Christ only. But you have people that will help hold your arms up right. in the process to help you have the victory. And this is what happened in this, in, this, in this battle. And it gets to the end. And the Lord said to Moses in verse 14, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua. This is to train Joshua. Man, you're going to need help. You're going to need help when you march around that wall seven times. You're going to have an army with you. You're not going to do these things alone. Anything God's called you to do. You need helpers. You need to, to delegate. Learn how to delegate. But it goes on to say, um, and say, you know what? You have to learn to trust people to, to delegate to them to do it. Don't think just because you think you might can do a better job, you're just going to do it. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to tell you what. You will wear yourself, slap yeah. out, and you won't be able to fulfill the destiny of what God's called you to do. So really, you just but, have to have faith in people. I mean, you have faith in God, but you also have to trust people. You know, that they will do, you know, they have your best interest at heart and do that. And you don't want to micromanage. No. Micromanaging is not good because it signifies to people that you don't trust them. So, so you give them the opportunity to do what they have in their hearts and what they believe they can do with their hearts and just believe God's going to take care of it all. And honestly, there are going to be people that could do a lot better job. I, I don't have a clue about computer stuff. But thank God for Teresa. <laughs> thank God for Teresa. I mean, I'm, you know, and then she gets people that help her because I, I just, that's not my expertise. Sound ministry, thank God for Stephanie and for all of the sound people. You know, thank God for our praise team. These aren't things, Van and I can't do this alone. We need everybody to help us to make this, to, to fulfill the destiny. It takes every part of the body. You know, it takes the eye, it takes the, the hand, it takes the feet. It, it takes every part to make a complete body. But anyway, then in verse 15, and Moses built an altar and he called it, the Lord is my banner. You know, he is our victory. But honestly, y'all learn how to delegate. Take time to learn from this. Man, when Moses and father in said, man, you've got to delegate to these people. You can't lead all these thousands of people. Break it down. Have leaders over leaders. See, you even have leaders that are over leaders. We have several groups that are, we have leaders that lead, lead, lead the leaders. And then we have those leaders who lead a team and, and it makes everything function like it should. All right. Now we're going to talk about the law that Moses presented in John 1, 16 and 17. And his, of his faithfulness have we all received oh, and grace, I'm sorry, excuse me. And of his fullness <laughs> have we all received and grace for grace. Do you know he gives us grace to receive his grace? I just love that. Sometimes we make it works. I know I have. I have done things by works so many times. And the Lord said, just chill. <laughs> let, me, let me do this. I'm going to give you the grace just to believe and receive it. Just chill out. 
But he gives us the grace for grace. And then he goes on to say in verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, this law is so important. Law is not a bad thing. Mm-mm. We're going to hear more about the law. Galatians 3.11. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Talking about a cross. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we have the the law has been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled the law in himself through the finished work of the cross. So we don't have to, even though the law, you know, so many times think the law, the law, we look at the law like it's just, it was bad, but without, without the law, we would not have, you know. In fact, Galatians 3.24 says, therefore the law was our tutor. I think in the King James it says schoolmaster, but in the New King James it says tutor. The law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith, but after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor because people didn't know they were sinning. They didn't know what was right and what was wrong. There was nothing established. And so that's when when the Lord brought through Moses the law. And the law, which we know nobody can perfectly keep the law, impossible. That's why we need it. Through a tutor, we understand the Lord tutored us, or tutored the the people to see you have to have a savior. You have to have a redeemer. There's no way you cannot fulfill all these laws. And because of the word says, if you offend in even one point that you miss the law, you're guilty of breaking the entire law. So you have to do the whole thing. And who could fulfill the whole thing? Nobody but who? But Jesus. Jesus. And that's what Jesus did. So he, this is why it was so important, y'all, for, for Moses to be created, to not just to take the children of Israel out into the promised land from Egypt, but to bring the law, to produce the law to show us a need for a savior, to, because things were crazy. They had to have the law. No, nobody could keep it. And that's where we have the redeemer that came along, like Van said. Now let's, let's look at the transfiguration because this is such an important time. Matthew 17, one through eight. It says, now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Those were the the top three that he took with him. You remember he had his three, then he had 12. Talking about delegation, he had those three, and he took them with him. And this is very important for several reasons. And he said, he took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and he led them up on the high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, who was there? Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to the Lord, Lord, now you know Peter was always doing wild stuff. Lord, is it good for us to be here? It is. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm Wow. Wow. Y'all, that was, a, that was a big thing that he said there. And look what the father said. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. You're not here to hear these other two men. You're here to understand the value of why they're here. The, why they're here was they were to bring the law and the prophets together. This isn't about them. This is about him, Jesus Christ, who came, who was the perfect one. You, you listen only to him. Now, think about this. The, this is the next generation that's going to be passing on the gospel to the people around there. They needed to know, they needed to understand the law and the prophets and the value of Jesus. They needed to see this. So then when, once, the, 
Once that happened, then it goes on, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and they were greatly afraid. But look what happened. But Jesus came and touched them. And he said, arise, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm showing you this so you can carry this gospel to the people and you will pass it on from generation to generation, the new covenant. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus. It wasn't about Moses and the law. It wasn't about Elijah and the prophets. It was important to know that, to know what Jesus redeemed us from. It was important to see the, the, what the Lord has done and how he was the one that, it, that all of the gospel was about, the law and the prophets, so you could understand how to tell the people and equip them. Y'all, that's powerful. The next generation. But he only took three of them. But Peter had to be fleshed out a little bit. He's sitting there saying, oh, let me go ahead and build all of you a tabernacle. No, you don't worship these other men. You only worship the Lord. The one and only true God. Jesus, who paid the price for everything that we went through. Was Moses important? Absolutely. Without him, there would be no law that Jesus fulfilled. Right? See the value? Was Elijah important? Absolutely. The prophets were very important to show us the things to come. And now we have the Holy Spirit. And you think about, uh, talking about these same scriptures right here, you think about the law was the tutor to show everybody the need for a, for a savior, for a redeemer. Everybody understood, you know, this is, this is a permissible good in the sight of the Lord or this is bad, this is evil, and this is punishable, you know, by stoning or, or whatever. And then the prophets spoke the word into existence. They spoke Jesus into existence. The prophets, one prophet, one prophet, one another prophet, another prophet, and the word says, in the fullness of time, which means the law had been established, and when the prophets had spoken all the prophecies that needed to be prophesied about the soon coming Redeemer, the Son of God, then in that fullness of time, Jesus was established, came in with, you know, certainly had a, grew up, went to the cross, crucified, paid for our sins, past, present, and future, and also paid for the sickness and disease and anything else, any abnormalities or anything else. He was born on his back, pain, he was by his stripes on his back, we were healed. But then, I think it's so important what Virginia just read too, but, but Jesus, in verse 7, but Jesus came and touched them and said, arise and do not be afraid. See, they were not afraid when they saw uh, Moses and when they saw uh, Elijah it, it doesn't say they were afraid in there when they got afraid is when they heard the father speak this is my son this is my son my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased that's when the fear hit them and they fell on the ground but you notice when they get when the, before they got off the ground Moses disappeared, Elijah disappeared, Jesus only. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus fulfilled everything that the prophets had prophesied over a gazillion years. I think that is just so powerful. That is just incredibly powerful. And Peter... I think Peter was educated there, you know. Oh, I'm telling you. He got a good lesson of the, you know. He had the, quite a few good lessons. Yes, he did. He did. But Peter was like, he thought he was going to get some brownie points by, man, let's, we need three tabernacles right here. 
in all actuality, if you go build a tabernacle, it needed to only be Jesus. But Jesus didn't want a tabernacle because his body was a tabernacle. Go ahead, baby. Do you want to do this? Okay. Look at verse, look at uh, Deuteronomy 18, if you would, please. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. This is just so good. This is what Moses said. How in the world did Moses say this back in Deuteronomy? Prophetically. Moses was a prophet. And he said, the Lord, Deuteronomy 18, 15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. Who was he talking about? Jesus. He's saying that in Deuteronomy. In Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Acts 7, 37. It says, this is where Stephen, you know, Stephen's being stoned in there. You know, Stephen's going through this long dissertation. And Stephen says, you know, the first, the first, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, martyr of the New Testament. This is that Moses, this is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. And remember, the Father said in the transfiguration, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. But it goes all the way back to Deuteronomy about talking about, you know, that the children of Israel, this, there's a prophet just like Moses. And Moses said it himself in Deuteronomy. There's a pro prophet like me that's going to yeah. be raised up. And this is the one you shall hear. So it, it only makes sense in the transfiguration to have Moses show up. He's the one that said Jesus was coming like him. And he's the one you need to listen to. And it only makes sense. Elijah, who was such a great, you know, great notable yes. prophet, did all these miracles and everything else and signs and wonders. But then the key there was the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Everything aligned with each other. Every word. Nothing, nothing contradicting anything but lining up with each other. You know what, let's read this last part of when Moses died. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1, it says, Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all, and the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and the land of Judah as far as the West Sea and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, and the city of palm trees. Can you imagine how beautiful? As far as Zohar. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes but you, you shall not cross over. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley. I cry every time. Buried him in the valley in the land of Moab. You read the rest. Opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. Moses would now... And, and most of you, many of you quote this. I've heard you quote it a lot this of times. This is very good. very good. Verse 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. How, so, many, how many 120 year olds we have in here? <laughs> but you know what? Y'all think about Bes that. Besides Sharon Jay. Do we have any other 120 years? <laughs> Y'all stand up with us. You know what? I want you to think about this as we stand up. 
That, what that shows me, he died a healthy man. He died a healthy man. You know, I told you times when I read the word and my eyes here is 64 years old, my eyes sometimes try to decide they don't want to, they get blurry when I'm reading. And I said, no, in the name of Jesus, you will not grow dim. You will not. You will read and you will clear up now and they will clear up. I'm going to keep on doing that as long as I can keep on doing that. Amen. If Moses can do it at 120, I can do it at 64. But I'm telling you right now, and he still had his strength and his vigor. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I'm telling he you right now. He was climbing mountains the day before. Don't settle. Mm-hmm. Don't settle for any kind of sickness and disease in your body. That's right. Now, there's no condemnation. No. But I'm telling you right now, if you wear glasses, speak to those eyes continually every day. Lord, thank you for my perfect vision. Thank you that my vision's restored. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just keep thanking the Lord. Don't live below your means. Don't. When he's provided it for you, yes. Yes. stand and take a hold of it. Possess the land. You know, I want to, I want to, and I, I, was it Amy McPherson? Yeah. Was that who it was? That's right. Y'all listen to this story. This is so powerful. Did y'all enjoy today? Did you learn anything about Moses today? Praise God. Listen. I want y'all to hear this. Josiah, I want you to hear this. Amy McPherson, this is many years ago. She was in a service and she said, there's an anointing here for a supernatural manifestation of healing. Wasn't that what it was? Well, she said for a creative miracle. For a creative miracle. That's what yes. it was. For a creative miracle. And she kept issuing that invitation every 10 minutes for a while, and nobody would respond. Nobody came. I don't know if any of you heard this story or not, but... I just read it again the other day. In, fact, this, I, in fact, I posted it on Facebook. This person came up. Tell them how, tell them how, you know. Well, no, the person that finally, she said, I know there's somebody out here that needs a creative miracle because the Lord won't let me let it go. And finally, this one woman raised her hand back there. She had blankets across her lap. And she said, I want to show you something. Would this be too big of a creative creative miracle miracle for God God to do this? And she pulls back a blanket, and it's a child that has no arms, no legs, and a deformed face. And she said, let's worship the Lord. And they all began to worship and praise the Lord. Limbs grew out all over that child's body. Arms, legs, and the child's face became totally normal. Not with her laying hands on anybody, no. but just worshiping the Lord. And I, I'm going to put a challenge out to this you. This was over 50 years ago. How much more in this day and age that we're living in, where evil abounds and the Spirit of God, we have the same Spirit of God that she had, Amy McPherson has, living inside of us. And God is stirring things right. up like never before. And it's not just about, remember, we don't want to just lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Yes. We want to heal the sick. That's right. We want to see the demonstration of the power of God, not for entertainment's sake, but to validate to the lost and the unsaved and the religious that the, you're serving a, you can serve a living God with power. Amen. Amen. You know... I'm telling you right now, and I'm putting a challenge out to you, and there's no condemnation here either. But for those of you that come in late and you miss out on our morning prayer or you miss out on praise and worship, you're missing out. Praise and worship is where it's at. And I'm going to tell you what, we are going to see miracles during praise and worship. Absolutely. This girl right here is anointed of God to lead worship. Jessica J. has an anointing on her to lead worship, and I encourage you. 
be on time. And let's watch these miraculous things ha take place. Thank God for whatever Katie had in her, the, the, the obstacle, and the thing in her, the growth, whatever it was that was in her that had to go. It's gone. Thank God. Yes. But we need to be seeing these all the time. Yes. yes. So I'm urging you, come for worship. Let's worship God like you have never worshiped him before. I mean it. And let's watch God do creative miracles in this place. How many of you remember a few weeks ago, I think it's like six or seven weeks ago, Hallelujah. when we had words of wisdom and words of knowledge, and we told everybody, you're free to go, and people, nobody wanted to leave. And the words came from Joseph, Jake, uh, Sharon, Mark's son, had a word, we, we had a word for them, also for, for Harper LaBelle, who is Hallelujah. now, currently, today, fulfilling, fulfilling that word of wisdom we have. Both of them prophecy. are. Both of them are. Yes. He, Joseph is has a job. He's a senior at, at, uh, at Georgia State and wasn't even looking for a job and he's making more money than he ever made before. But through, the, through, through that, was, that job word in, North, in, Charlotte, in Charlotte, the people in Charlotte, North Carolina, the word was about Charlotte. And then Harper, Harper, God's got a, a job for you, a, a position for you that's coming soon and it's going to be right down your alley and you're going to love it and everything else. Harper, as we are speaking, or not as we speak because it's four o'clock this afternoon, the Falcons game, he will be doing the pre-game show and the post-game show for the Falcons on the Falcons Radio Network. 20 games this year. 20, 20 Sundays he'll be out. But, but Harper and Magda are coming on Tuesday nights because he can't be here on Sundays. Desire of his heart. He played for five NFL teams. The Falcons being the last one and he was had a career in an injury back about eight years ago. And God, he wanted to do something involving sports, involving his gift. And there he is. We got a God that is not holding back on us. That's right. He's ready to lavish us with the desires of our heart. As long as we're hooked up with him, he knows we're not going right. to have erroneous desires. He's the one that puts the desires right. in your heart. Glory to God. Find out what those desires that are that God has placed in your heart. Amen. Seek them out. You're not looking to, well, I, I want this, I want that. We're not talking about just fleshly desires. What desires have God put in your heart for an occupation or for a, a house? You've been living in an apartment and you want a house. Oh, it's too, the inflation. No, inflation is not bigger than Jesus. Are you kidding me? Don't shortchange yourself based on the reports of the world. Amen? We're not, we're not a servant to the world's economy. We have Jesus as a You time. know what? Every, every Sunday we come in here, we're going to start thanking the Lord in our prayer time yes. for creative miracles. Creative we're going to start. And I, yes. or I'm encouraging every one of you, Thank come you in Lord. this place. Yes. Let's pray. Let's, you know what? The children of Israel cried out to Thank the Lord, you. and God heard their cries. Yes. So when we all come in this place, we've seen yes. miracles in here. Thank you, Father. We've experienced them in our own life. Sure. You know, just like the growth they had that I had on my ovary that was the size of a golf ball. And I went in five days later and it was gone. Y'all, we're going to see this all the time. But we're not looking for a creative miracle or a miracle every now and then. Let's speak it all the time. We want it now and all now the and now and all now. The time. All the time. Not then and then and then and then. So I encourage you, let's all be here at 9.30 yes. next Sunday yes. morning. Let's cry out before the Lord. Let's believe God. Yes. Let's see We're Josiah. We're not begging him to do anything. He's already done. It's a finished work I'm of the cross. I'm going to tell you what. We're going to see Josiah run across here. We're just with the finished work of the cross. I'm gonna, are we going to see Josiah run across this, yes. across here? You ready, Josiah? We're going to take that be wheelchair ready? and okay. hang it on the wall. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many of you believe this will happen? I'm Amen. believing. Amen. Amen. No more pussyfooting around. That's right. That's right. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. And I'm going to tell you what. I don't know if you have a prayer path, but our prayer path is holy ground. And we speak it and we speak over y'all and we walk our prayer path. We and it's holy ground and we declare it. Yes. And the same God that's done miracles in our life, I am speaking it over every last one of you in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. 
Those of you that have glasses, just say, Lord, I thank you for my perfect vision in Jesus' name. You just keep saying it. Thank you that my vision is being restored 2020 in Jesus' name. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. My eyes will not grow dim. They will not. I will have strength and vigor Yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Start speaking these things over your body. Amen. Amen. Your, the, bo- your bodies will obey They you. will. In the name of Jesus. They will. If you're dealing with arthritis, yes. you start speaking to those bones. Yes. So you yes. will function. You will move. That's right. That's right. You That's will right. be limber. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you've been dealing with headaches, we command it to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise Sleepless you. nights, we command it to stop in Jesus' name. We curse insomnia right now in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Anything worry or anything that's preventing you from having a good night's sleep, we that's curse right. right now in Jesus' name. We command sweet sleep, slumber Hallelujah. over every one of you in here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Man, God loves us so much. All he's saying is just believe me and receive it. That's right. Believe me and expect it. That's right. He's given us everything that pertains to what? Thank you. To life and godliness. Fill in the blank for me. All things are possible. Abundant life. All things are possible to those who, who? That believe. That believe what? Believe that Jesus is who he says he is. He's a reward of those who diligently seek him. But he is willing and able and has already done so. He has already paid the price. Amen. We're not tolerating everything. anymore, y'all. We're not He's tolerating He's given us anymore. life and life more abundantly already. It belongs to us. By his stripes, you were healed. That's right. That's Past right. tense, right. were healed. Were healed. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but, but the Lord will deliver them yes, out of them all. all. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This time right now is so very important. Yeah. We're not up here to be cheerleaders. I could be a cheerleader. Yeah. But we're not up here to be cheerleaders. We're here to encourage you to do this, to stand on the word. And not just on Sunday mornings. No, every day. In fact, every day. Every Pray day. in the spirit every day. Yes. Yes. Every day. Speak over your body every day. Thank you, Lord. Speak to any mountains in your life. Speak to Mark 11, 22, 23. Hallelujah. 24. Thank you. Our youth is renewed. Thank you, Lord, for my youth. That's right. Thank you, Father. That I'll never look 64. Thank you, Lord. You just speak to it, y'all. You've got to speak to yourself. I'm wrinkle-free in Jesus' name. I say it all the time. Wrinkle-free in Jesus' name. I, I mean, this is not silly. This is the word. This is the word of God. But you know what? Glory to the God. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, but Hallelujah. particularly the cares of this world, it says choke out the power of the word. I mean, the word is still there. The word is fi- finished and forever settled in heaven. Hallelujah. But the cares of this world, we find ourselves kind of falling into a mindset of meditating on them or thinking about them or whatever else. Leave the cares out there. Cast your yeah, cares upon you. him because he watchfully and carefully Thank cares you, for Lord. you. You don't have to carry the cares of the world. In fact, you should not carry the cares of this world. Hallelujah. Cast them on him. And then start claiming the prize. Has somebody been dealing with back issues? Anybody been dealing with back issues? Raise your hands if you've been dealing with back issues. If you've been dealing with back or hip issues, is that you? Anybody? Right here, baby. Look. Okay. We got several. All right. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Get on up here. Oh my gosh. Come you here. can. You can. You Come sure on. can. Oh my God. We you will help can. you. Come on. Rodney's going to help you. Rodney's going to help you. Come on. Come on, Becky. Oh, praise Jesus. Becky has been about 50 times at death's door over oh, the last year. You can do this. They're and here she you. is. It's okay. You don't you don't she have said, to I left my walker in the car. I'm glad okay. she left her walker in the car. It's okay. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come in, come in, come sit right up here. Listen, 
The devil's tried to kill this woman. Over and over and over. Cancer big time, but she is, I'm telling you, she's healed. She is healed in the name of Jesus. Here, sit, sit right here. Sit right here. Can you get there? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, Lord, we just speak over Becky right now in the name of Jesus. Total healing from the top of her head to the sole of her feet in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you are gone once and for all. Hallelujah. You are gone in the name of Jesus. We are not tolerating any more of this in Jesus' name. We speak life and kidneys. We speak to you right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We call this finished. This is a finished work of the cross. Hallelujah. Every doctor's report that has been bad. Lord, we speak the word is good. Yeah. And the healing is good. In the name of we Jesus. The in the name of, of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Oh, glory to God. Y'all, God is doing things right now in this place. Total healing right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those who had the back issues. Those who had the back issues, I want you to lift your hand right now if you had the back issues. Back and hip. All right, we speak. Listen, go to those who have hands up for back issues. They're, the Lord said he's healing you right now. Back issues, hip and back issues. The Lord is healing you right now. Go to those people that have their hands raised. Back and hip issues right there. Mesre, lay hands on Mesre. Back and hip issues. Go there right now. Hallelujah, Nancy. Somebody lay hands. Okay, you go to these people. God is healing you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We know it's happening right now in Jesus' name. Pain be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Total healing in the name of Jesus over back and hip issues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody that's been dealing with headaches. Who is it that's been dealing with headaches? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Head pain. Any kind of head pain. Anybody that's been dealing with head pain. Oh, my gosh. If that's you, right here. All right. Somebody come lay hands right here. Hallelujah. I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus over this head in the name of Jesus and anybody else with headaches. We command them to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We call it done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're watching online and you have hip or back issues or headaches, we command them gone right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Total healing in Jesus' name from head to toe on every person in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, this is very important time. This is very important time. Hallelujah. 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 Who's been having stomach issues? Hallelujah. If you have stomach issues of any kind. Hallelujah. We speak over stomach issues. Those yes. watching online right now. Hallelujah. Stomach issues. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, supernatural healing taking place. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Divine health in Jesus' name. Divine health in Jesus' name. We speak it. Hallelujah. If our prayer ministers will come on down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Prayer ministers, come down front if you would. Thank you. Y'all, this is very important. We're going to see these things every week. I'm proclaiming it. I'm urging all of you, be here at 930 next Sunday morning. Let's do this. The word says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent, those that are violent you in faith. This, this is you're not even using stuff. your faith. You're using the faith of the Son of God in you. Yeah. The violent in total, faith, total take it by force. Total kidney. Yes, total healing right now in the name of Jesus. We speak over this kidney in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Get ready for great and mighty things. You got a testimony. Okay, where's the microphone? We need a microphone. Just stay right there. Just stay right there. Thank Just you. stay right there. You're good. 
There's an anointing up here. You just stay right there. Hallelujah. Is it on? Okay. Yeah, okay. So when you talked about last week, you called about back pain. Yes. And then you called about head and sleeping, all of those. So when I had Josh, he sat on my sciatic nerve. I walked with a cane years, had back pain lately. It was even worse. I was sleeping with something under my back last week. And this week I got up. There was no pain. Um, I got up. I've slept through the night. Um, last week I had the worst headache in my life. I couldn't touch anything. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't move. I couldn't do it. It was every part of my head just was attacked. It was horror. I couldn't believe it. I've never experienced such pain. And the Holy Spirit said, worship. He said, worship. And I stood there with my teeth gritted and I was like, Aki, oh, just this is the worship. I said, sing, let's worship. And the minute we began to worship, I physically felt it just, it just came off. It left, I, I, was, I slept, I went and laid, because if you lay down, you can feel the pain that comes up to your head from every part of your body. And I just, I laid down and slept and we worship, worship. That's worship just singing just even in your heart if you can't sing if you can't open your mouth because it hurts just worship it's just Amen. hallelujah do you know any other great anybody else have testimonies let me let me tell you something talking about worship years ago i had growths on my vocal cords i couldn't talk at all huh. can you imagine me not talking I couldn't talk. My voice kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. I sounded like a man. And then it went away. And Van would call me from work, and he'd punch a code on the phone. This has been what? And I'd punch a code back. 25. No, so well, he could talk 30, to me, but I couldn't years, talk to him. Years so ago, 30 years ago. What, I, I'd be once for yes and twice for no, and we had these other codes. And, and I got so angry at the devil. When you get to a point where you've had enough, and you're done, Righteous in the name. I got so mad. And the doctor said, you will never sing again. They were going to do surgery. How many of you have not heard this testimony? Okay, there are quite a few. And the doctor told me, you will never sing again. I was singing. And he said, you'll never sing again. And it was all I could do to get even a, a, a whimper out. And finally, I got so mad. And I said, Lord, you created me to worship. And I'm saying it with my, in my mind. And I said, I will sing. And no devil in hell will keep me from worshiping. Because no rock is going to replace me in the name of Jesus. And I just started singing. And I kept singing. Until I got this back. And I've been talking ever since. I told him he was going to be sorry. No operation, no so anything else. Butt. And they I were, said, no. I never said, had surgery. Yeah, no surgery, right. They said I could. I had to. They said I was going to have to have surgery. Yeah. I never had to have surgery. That foolishness left. I didn't sound like, I don't sound like a man. I didn't sound like a man anymore. Through worship. So I'm encouraging you. Be here next Sunday at 930. Yes. Let me give you. Hallelujah. Are y'all enjoying this? I do. Service is over if you need to go. No, it's not. We got to do this first. Hang on. Hang on, Deborah. Listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're watching online and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we encourage you to call us at 404 697 5215. If you need healing, if you need anything, if you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, again, call us at 404-697-5215. Our have a healing testimony, call us too. And if you have a testimony and you want to call us anything, yeah. just call us. But we just want to say by the live stream, we love you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for joining Everyone us. Everyone watching on live stream, see us, see us back next week at 10 a.m. Eastern 10 Standard Time. Thank you for joining us.